Let's do 120.
Jesus Christ. We're adopted in to the faith. The believers on him. That he can still work miracles. And he can never wonder for life. Come on. Glory to God. Brothers, I'm going to tell you I'm not perfect. You know, by no means. I have flaws just like everybody else. But Brother Danny, I strive each day to get closer to God.
He said, how can Satan cast out Satan? Glory to God. He told him, he said, a house divided will not stand. Glory to God. It will stand against itself. But glory to God, that same that me and you, if we got the world in our hearts, God can't live in it. But glory to God, if we got God in our lives, glory to God, that darkness is No more dominion uh, on me and you. Uh, I'm going to show you something that uh, what the Lord showed me. Uh, as I walk back here, uh, Lord to God, uh, we look around today. Uh, we see light. Uh, Lord to God, uh, before we were born uh, by the blood of the Lamb, uh, we had darkness in our lives. Uh, Lord to God. Uh, but when God uh, come down in our lives, uh, Lord to God, uh, that light uh, entered our body, uh, the darkness uh, had to leave. Uh, We're not in bondage anymore. But Lord to God, I tell you tonight, we got the power of the Holy Ghost that's waiting to manifest itself in me and you. Brother Danny, he don't have to have us, but Lord to God, he wants to use us. Glory. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. He don't have to have us. He don't. Glory to God, I read in the scriptures where he used his self when he walked Amen. earth. Go ahead, brother. To manifest himself in the power of the hill. Glory to God. But brothers, he wants us to be there with him in that closer walk that we can obey him and hear him. You know, brother, he said in the scripture, he said, my people know my voice and a stranger. They're not going to follow it. You know, brother, if your mom and dad calls when you're little, you'll come to them. But you take a stranger on the street and they call you by another name. Brother, you're going to keep walking, but glory to God when that living God comes down and calls out her name we know the voice that he's calling Amen you know, Use him, Lord. I know that's kind of Come strange on. Come on I just have to obey God You know I was thinking in the scriptures I said Lord I said we need to move from you I said we want to move from the days of old. We want to see the sick raised up. We want to see the dead raised, the blinded eyes open. And I was thinking about in the scriptures that the Lord spoke to me. He said, are you obeying me? It's like the days of old. And I stopped for a minute. I said, Lord, I try to do everything I can for you. You know, it's something you can have preached and it hits home a little bit. You know, that's one thing about me. When I get up to preach, I get to do what the Lord gives me and tells me. I'm not preaching toward anybody but myself. I said, Lord, I try to. Brother Danny, you know what he told me one day? He said, Remember when I walked up to the water and said, God cast the heads out trying to catch fish? I said, Yeah, he said, Remember when he was trying to feed his baby? I said, yeah. He said, you remember the words I told him? I said, what was that, Lord? Here's what he told me. He said, remember when I told him to cast his nets down and come follow me and I'll make you fish to me? I said, yeah, I do, Lord. I said, he come with you. But he said, what did he do before he come with me? I stopped a minute and I said, Lord, I can't remember that part. He said, you remember when he told me, he said, let me go tell my family. I got to go. Remember that? He said, let me go tell my family. I got to go. And he said, I looked at him and I told him, I said, no, oh, come on me. You know why he done that? Because he knew if he went and told his family, his family was going to talk him out of it. His family going to try to change it around. You know, we can't make it without you. We're going to start. Amen. You know, I'm not putting anybody down today and I well, I mean, just give me a second to work through this and I'll, I'll bring it out to you. He said, okay, Lord, I'll go with you. Here's what I'm getting at. 
If the Lord tells you to do something in the church, don't worry about what your family tells you. Amen. Amen. Brother, I've had my family tell me I'm crazy. You know what? But I serve a living God. You know, I don't know about you. I remember Brother Bo when I was in that bondage. You know, Brother, but when he come down in me, he breathed a breath of life just like he did in the days of old, just like he did with Adam and Eve. The Bible said that he took Adam and he breathed life down in him and the dead came up. You know, brothers and sisters, if we want to see the dead Rise. We don't have to go out here to no cemetery. Glory to God. All we got to do is look for the dead on our jobs. Got brothers and sisters, if they're dead in Christ, glory to God, they're already doomed. Good devil's hell. If you want to see the dead raised, glory to God, help bring them to God. Amen. Glory. Amen. Bless you. You know, brother, Daddy. We've said it here before, God's wanting to move. You said, brother, how do you know God's wanting to move in the church? The devil wouldn't be fighting the church when he is. But Amen. Amen. God wouldn't pay him. Amen. 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 Come on. He's not going to fight with his family if he didn't have a, Amen. a plan for it. Because I'm going to tell you from experience, if the devil ain't fighting you, he's already got you. Amen. Glory to God. You know, really, but if you got God on your side, you're going to have a battle show up that you didn't know could show up. You're going to have Amen. battles appear in your life that was been there before. But glory to God, watch this. You're to the point that you know right from wrong. Yeah. The battles might have been there before, and you followed them, but you didn't know it was wrong. But when God turned on the light switch in your heart, glory to God, when the battles come, you know he was in the wrong. Brothers, that's when you got to go back to God and say, God, if I walked in, then you them that wasn't right. Please forgive me. You know, brother, that's where the grace comes in of his love down in us that he can tap you on the shoulder and say, brother, don't stress about it. Don't worry about it. Pick up your cross and follow me. Come on. Brother, come on. We're in a spiritual battle with warfare. You know, the scripture says, the devil come not to kill, to steal, and destroy. Here's what she is. If he can steal your life, bring you back down to that old body that you was walking in once before. Right. That's the death that he's talking about to kill. If he can get that, he can steal your love for him, for your family members, Amen. for anything you have. And if he can steal that and destroy anything that walks around you. Uh -huh. Amen. Come you on. know, the Lord has been showing me a lot here lately. No. I've I got battles my own. Amen. I'll be honest with you, I'm probably one of the hardest people to live with sometimes. I don't mean to be. You say, brother, are you getting up behind the pulpit and say that? Yeah, I am. I'm going to be honest with you. Man. I'll tell oh, yeah. you what. I got God fighting on this side sometimes. And the devil fighting yeah. on this side. God will give me something on here. The devil will try to steal it from here. Yeah, you said, right. what are you doing about it? Are you going to sit down and let him steal it? No, brothers. I can't do that. Because I've got a race to run. And I've got to finish this race. I'm finished this morning. Because I know it's going to touch. I believe it's going to touch somebody. There's a devil fighting in here. Saying, brothers. Why don't you just throw in the towel and give it up? Nobody likes it. Nobody wants to hear it. Why don't you just sit down and let somebody else? You know, Brother Daddy, you know what God told me the other day? I'm going to be honest with you. The devil fought with me like that. And God come to me in the middle of the night and said, Brother, remember the piss of hell that you was in that I brought you out of? Remember the drug addiction that you cried at night? Walked yeah. out of it and you couldn't do it. And he said, Remember when the hand of God come down and delivered you up that you could walk that straight narrow path? Come on, brother. I was telling God the other day, I said, Lord, I talk to the Lord when we were away sometimes. I said, Lord, I see all these people that's got all this money. They can go out and buy whatever they want to. They buy one a new car, they can go out and buy it. 
They want a new house, they can go out by it. And I said, Lord, but there's no love in their hearts. You see the pain in their eyes. You can see it when you walk by them. Some of the grouchiest people you'll ever meet. And the Lord brought something to my attention the other day. Classy, Lord. He said, remember in the scriptures when I said it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle yeah. than it is for a rich man to make it head. I don't know if anybody's heard, really read about the eye of the needle. Yeah. I want to bring it out to you for a second. Bless Back you. then with the castles and everything they had to go in, you know, they had to creek it went around it so people can't just come in. And they had to go across this little bridge when it was down. And they'd take the camel walking through it. But they got back and that bridge door was shut and they, they wouldn't open it back up for them at night time. There was a little cut out there that they had to take. The cut out wouldn't be like four foot high. You know, you take a camel six, seven, eight, nine foot tall, you know, it's hard for them to make it through there. But they said that they would take and they had to have it loaded down and they would have to take the packages off the camel's back and feed them through that little eye of the needle, they call it. And here's what the, if anybody knows about a camel, you can't hardly get a camel down. You might get it on its side for a minute, it might roll over, but it gets back up. You get a camel down on all fours, glory to God. It'll get down on its legs and it'll sit there for a minute. But here's what they had to do. They had to get that camel to lay down, to spread its legs out, to spread them back and get that camel to crawl through that little hole. But let me go back for a minute to get him to go through that little hole. What did I say they had to do? They had to take and unload the packages from off his back. Here's what the Lord showed me. If we want to get to that eye of a needle, Glory to God, the weights of packages that's been down on our backs, that's been trying to hold us down to where we can't make it through that hole. Brother Bo, we got to take them off and get down and cry to him. Glory to God. Here's what the Lord showed me. If we want to go through the needle, glory to God, this might be a little strange, but the Lord said we got to come to him as humble as a little child. Brother, as a little child. Child, we crawl to our mamas and daddies at first. At first, we don't start running, we don't start walking, but at first, we gotta crawl. That's the same way to him as a little child. We gotta crawl to him, and when we get there, we gotta lay it all down at the foot of the cross and not pick it up anymore. But glory to God, when we meet him there, he's gonna be there with us, waiting on us to lift us up. To bring us through that little hole that we can go through. Amen. Amen. Brother, because we go through, get the weights off our backs. Glory to God, we'll be able to make it to that little hole. Bless you. Amen. You know, Praise God. the Lord's wanting to move here. I feel it. Last thing, Lord. We was just reading Brother Randall coming here the other day. We had some singers come up in here. I don't think they've ever been here before. You know, I'm bragging on God. I'm missing it. They got up and they start singing back here. I can kind of hear cracking up a little bit. I sat there and listened for a minute. I sat back here and I started grinning. She turned around to Brother Randall and said, I'll tell you what, she said the spirit's up here tonight. You know, brother, that really touched me sitting back there when a stranger can come into the house and get up here and sing and say, let's feel the spirit of the Lord. You know, brother Danny, that tells me that we not only brought them with us, each and every one of us here, but he met us here with open arms. Glory to God. Brother Danny, I feel the power fixing to come Amen. through. Let's feel yeah. like a mighty rushing wind. Amen. Glory. Come on, brother. Brother. Amen. Preach it now. Come on up here, Daddy. Go ahead. But I'll tell you what. Last one, Lord. Last People don't believe God can move the way he used to. Last thing, Lord. I'll tell you right now, it's not that God's not moving the way he used to. We're not moving for him. Amen. Amen. Brother. Amen. The Bible says we're strange people. We're strange Amen. people. Amen. I'm going to obey God for a minute. I, I, I feel the Spirit of the Lord still here. But I'm going to tell you this. I remember preachers used to run these bitches. Amen. Brother, I, I, I watched 
watched him get up run back to there. Yeah. And we all know the scripture where it said obedience is a better sacrifice. Yeah. But Brother Danny, he tells us to make ourselves a living yeah. sacrifice holy and acceptable yeah. with you. If we knew the Danny, if we think it's strange, God's told him to do it. Amen. Amen. I'll be the first to tell you, the Lord told me to run a couple of times Amen. before, and I didn't run. And I watched the guy behind me take off running and yeah. get his blessing before he got back to the altar. Amen. Amen. Here's what I'm going to say. Whether you think it's strange or not, obey God. Amen. You say, what well, if it's the devil telling you to do this? Here's the discernment. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be with you. The devil's not going to tell you to do something for God. Amen. He's not going to do it. Amen. If he tells you to run, run, because it's for a reason. Amen. God's going to move in somebody's lives. Mm -hmm. Brother. <coughs> I feel healing in here tonight, or this morning. I might be, feel like I'm rumbling on right now, but I gotta get something out. The Lord told me to tell you this right here. He said, remember the stripes that I took, I took for you. If you search out the stripes and how they done it back then, the Bible said he took 39 major stripes. 39 stripes for 39 major diseases. Yeah. I was asking the Lord one time, I said, why didn't you take 40 stripes? And he showed me something one day and he had me search it out. Back then, if the guy whipped them, would give them 40 stripes. Remember when he said, I got to walk this walk alone? Remember when he said that? Mm -hmm. Amen. The Lord said, if they give me 40 stripes, the stripes wasn't what was going to kill him. He knew he had to go for the cross. Amen. But he said if I give him 40 stripes, he wouldn't have died from it. And the guy given the 40 stripes would have to be killed because it was considered abuse back then. Amen. Because after 39 stripes, you're supposed to be legally dead. And he said, I had a stop at 39 because I told him I had to walk this walk alone. I didn't want anybody else to die with me in it. But he said the 39 stripes that I took was for the 39 major diseases and each disease we have right now falls under. Amen. More than one of them falls under one major disease. <laughs> the crown of thorns that they put on his head searched the crown out one day. That crown that they pushed down in his head was three inch crowns of thorns. And on each one of them thorns they was poisoning him. To make him suffer even more. Yeah. But look here. When he wore that crown of thorns, they pushed it down to his head and the, the poison started running down in it and he started getting weak.